Hello everybody, my name is Matt, I'm with Scope Education. In this video, we'll be talking about ECG blocks. This is actually a viewer recommended video, so if you guys ever want us to talk about something, feel free to message us on here, leave a comment, or find us on Twitter or Facebook. So, let's get started. In the normal heart conduction system, everything starts in the right atrium in the SA node, sinoatrial node. Things then move over to the left atrium through the Bachmann's bundle over here. That's how the left atria is depolarized. Now from here you go down from the SA node down to the AV node, which is the junction between your atria and your ventricles. From here, impulses then go to the HIS bundle, and then they go down the bundle branches, the left and right bundle branches, and they go down through the Purkinje fibers. You might notice I have asterisks next to the SA node, AV node, and the bundle branches. That's because that is where all of our blocks are going to be coming from, and those are going to be the ones we're going to be talking about today. So blocks, here are the ones that we're going to be talking about. We have our SA exit block, we have our sinus arrest, we have our AV blocks, we have our bundle branch blocks, and our fascicular blocks are also called our hemi blocks. A sinoatrial block occurs when the impulse that leaves the SA node is not conducted in the atria and subsequently not conducted in the ventricles. A sinoatrial block can also mean that the impulse that leaves the SA node is delayed. A reason for this could be due to the cells being refractory and can't conduct anything again at that time. The rhythm will be regular except in the area where there will be an exit block. There will be one P wave for every QRS, so one to one ratio. In this rhythm, there will be at least there will be one beat drop. The next beat that occurs will be in sync with the original rhythm. So the R to R interval will be the same across the whole rhythm strip. We can see example of this below. You can see the R to R interval is the same here. So let's march this out. You can see here is where the other QRS, other beat, was supposed to be, but it was blocked. And as you can see, the next QRS that occurs is in line with the rest of the rhythm. So the heart was able to overcome the refractory cells and start everything back in the same sequence as before. So the R to R interval is same. Science rest occurs when there's a temporary cessation of impulses from the SA node. Usually these patients ha will have sick sinus syndrome, which means their SA node is not working appropriately. Sinus arrest and sinoatrial block or exit block are very similar, except in a sinoatrial block, the pause is directly correlated to the R to R interval. A sinus arrest is not a multiple of R to R intervals. In if the sinus arrest is long enough, the other pacemaker cells will con start to conduct impulses, also called escape beats, to prevent the person from experiencing the chronic yet very stable rhythm of asystole. In sinus arrest rhythm, there will be two or more beats dropped, and then the escape beat will be made. The escape is a compensatory mechanism as the heart realizes the pacemaker cells in the SA node have malfunction. Escape beat is a little out of sequence from the underlying rhythm and can occur earlier or later than, than the rest of the rhythm. In this example, let's march them out. You can see that the end beat occurs a whole large box away and that will be your escape beat. So you can see your two drop beats. The QRS was supposed to be here and the QRS was also supposed to be here and the next QRS was supposed to be here. Well, this is gonna be your escape beat right here. So, drop, drop, escape beat. Now onto AV blocks. The AV blocks consist of a first degree, a second degree type one, a second degree type two, and a third degree, or which is also called your complete heart block. Each of these will be caused by dysfunction of the AV node, which is circled here on the right. A first degree heart block occurs when the impulse is slowed through the AV node, which in turn delays action potential from reaching the ventricles, thus prolonging your PR interval, which is usually greater than 0.2 seconds. It's the only heart block where you describe the rhythm prior to stating the type of block. For example, normal sinus rhythm with a first degree AV block. The patient with this block is most likely asymptomatic. In younger patients, a first degree heart block may arise from increased vagal tone. In the elderly, the cause is most likely the fibrotic changes of the cardiac conduction system. Other issues like MI, coronary heart disease, inflammation can also cause a first degree heart block. You can see in the example to the right that the PR interval is prolonged. There's one P wave for every QRS, so there's no polyuria. Remember, polyuria means excessive P. So is there an excessive amount of P waves? No, there's not. So there isn't any polyuria. A second degree type 1 AV block occurs when there is a varying failure of impulses making it to the AV node. There is not a 1 to 1 QRS ratio, so there is polyuria or excessive amount of P waves. This rhythm is unique in that there is a consistent delay in the P wave conduction until the P wave does not conduct a QRS complex. The PR interval progresses in duration until a QRS complex is dropped. So 
longer, longer, drop one. So a second degree type one. So longer, longer, drop one, second degree type one. Sometimes when the block is consistent, the QRS complexes are said to be group beating, which means that you'll notice all these are grouped. There'll be a pause and then there'll be another group and there'll be another group of hope four here. So let's look at this a little more. So we have P wave and then the QRS, we have a prolonged PR. It gets a little longer, gets a little longer, a little longer, and then P wave with no QRS. So this was dropped. So longer, longer, longer drop. This is your second degree type one. A second degree type 2 AV block occurs due to the, a conduction failure in the his Purkinje system. This rhythm is considered a high degree AV block, is characterized by intermittent non-conducted P waves without prolongation of the PR interval. There is no variation in your PR interval. There is an excessive amount of P waves, so there is polyuria noted, but there isn't any longer, longer drop noted. Every QRS is preceded by a P wave that has the same PR interval as the ones before and after. So this PR, this P wave conducted this QRS, this one conducted this one, this one conducted this one, and this one conducted this one. All the PR intervals are the same for every complex. The only thing that's different is this one doesn't have a QRS, this one doesn't have one, and this one doesn't have one. So this is gonna be your second degree type two or a Mobitz two. A third degree heart block is also called a complete heart block due to complete AV dissociation. This means the P waves and QRS complexes are not correlated at all. The atria and the ventricles are beating independently from each other and are not communicating. The SA node produces atrial activity that then gets conducted to the AV node. The AV node then blocks these impulses. The ventricular activity will usually manifest as a ventricular escape or a junctional escape that will normally be bradycardic because anything lower than the AV node is usually going to be very slow low in comparison to the SA node, especially the ventricles. Occasionally patients will be asymptomatic, but generally they will be extremely hemodynamically unstable and will need immediate transcutaneous pacing. Because the atrium ventricles are beating independently, P to P interval is the same across the rhythm and the R to R interval is the same as well. There is a lot of polyuria noted and you can see down in the example, these are all the same distance from each other. All the QRSs are the same distance from each other. And all the P waves are all the same distance away from each other. There is no communication between the atria and the ventricles. One of the signs that you might notice is a P wave. Actually, suppose there is a P wave. It might be like right here. It's slammed against the QRS complex. That P wave is not far enough away to conduct that QRS. And you might notice that in the first complex over here, this T wave looks different from all these other T waves, right? The P wave is giving it more of a pointed appearance. This section, we're gonna be talking about bundle branch blocks. There are two bundle branches. You got your left bundle branch and your right bundle branch. But to make things more difficult, because why wouldn't medicine do that? The left bundle has two different fascicles called the left anterior fascicle and the left posterior fascicle. Left anterior fascicle obviously wraps around the anterior or front side of the heart and the left posterior wraps around the back. The arrows show where these blocks will occur. In a bundle branch block, the QRS will be widened in both. So the QRS duration must be over 120 milliseconds. A left bundle branch will have a negative QRS in V1 and a positive QRS in V6. A right bundle branch block will have a positive in v QRS in V1 and a slurred S wave in the lateral leads, such as V6. An easy way to remember these is to think about driving. If you aren't a total trash bag, you hopefully use a turn signal when you drive. To turn right, you push the turn signal up. So in a right bundle branch block, the QRS will be up in V1. Turn left, you pull the turn signal down. So the QRS will be down in the left bundle branch block. And you can see the slurring of the S wave right here. So this is your S wave right here. And you can see how it kind of slurs out over here. And you got your positive here in V1. You could get your RSR prime. There's a whole different types of morphologies of right bundles. And in your left bundle, look at that. Down in V1, up in V6. I have another video called STEMI equivalent left bundle branch block, the Smith's Garbosa criteria. That goes more into left bundle branch blocks and what they're supposed to look like. So I'll link that up above in the right hand corner and you guys can click that if you want to. Now we're gonna do a little test question. It's a, you either get a zero or you get a 100%. What bundle branch block is this? Pause the video and look at this example. 
So you see a widened QRS, and the QRS is down in V1. So what kind of boner branch block is this? This is going to be your left boner branch block. So now we will hit on fascicular blocks. You will have your left interior fascicular block and your left posterior fascicular block. You can see on the right that the X's show where the blocks will be, and these are also called your hemi blocks. These fascicles, once again, are branching off of the left bundle branch. In the left interior fascicular block, the impulses will be conducted to the left ventricle via the left posterior fascicle because the left interior fascicle is blocked. You'll see a small Q wave and a large R wave in one in EVL, a small R wave and a large S wave in the inferior leech, such as 2, 3 AVF and left axis deviation. Now, quick recap on axis deviation. We're gonna utilize something called the thumb method. It's a down and dirty way of doing axis deviation. If the QRS is down, you put your thumb down. If it's up, you put your thumb up. So lead one will be your left thumb and lead AVF is gonna be your right thumb. So lead one is up and AVF is down. Your thumbs are going in opposite directions. So your thumbs have left each other so that you got left axis deviation. So you can see you got a Q wave and a large R wave, Q wave and a large R wave and one in AVL. You have a very small R wave right here and a large S wave, small R, big S wave, little R, that's a little small S, but you get the hint. Here's the left posterior fascicular block. It is the exact opposite as the left interior fascicular block. You will have right axis deviation. Were you gonna be doing the same thumb method as explained before? Lead one is down, lead AVF is up. Your thumbs are heading right towards each other. So you got right axis deviation. You'll have a small R wave and large S wave and one in AVL and a small Q and a large R in the inferior leads. So little R, larger S in comparison to the R, little R, larger S wave in comparison to the R wave. You have a little baby Q wave, little baby Q wave, and large R waves. That's gonna be your left posterior fascicular block. Welcome to the end of the video. As I mentioned before, this is a viewer requested video, so feel free to let us know what you guys wanna see. And also check out our website, which will be in the description along with our social media. We don't just make YouTube videos, we also make a lot of free open access medical education content on our website, which you can check out. It's www.scopeeducation.training. It's going to be in the description, like I said, down below. Once again, my name is Matt, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video.